And good morning or afternoon in Europe and welcome to the start of our new phase one industrial webinar series. Uh, our plan is to have one a month from now on. Uh, and the first one here is being held on the accuracy report we completed in our main industrial R&D center. Um, and Yuri, our chief scientist, will take over from me in a few moments. Um, before we start, I would just like to do a quick reminder of who we are as phase one and phase one industrial. And also, my name is Steve Cooper. I am the VP of phase one industrial, if you don't know me already. And my background is fully in geomatics uh, with my degree, which seems a very long time ago now, uh, BSc Honours degree from Newcastle University in the UK in mapping science, of which the first year was aerial photography. Uh, a very long time ago, so it was very old technology. Okay, so who is phase one? I think you pretty much all know who we are. Just Phase one is the leading industry um, provider of medium format imaging systems. Uh, we have been around for 25 years now as phase one. And the main point is that we are the specialists in all innovative breakthroughs. Uh, on all sorts of things from digital imaging systems through to medium format, through to the full productive imaging workflows. The industrial division started just over six years ago for exactly what we say, industrial solutions. So we, in our industrial division, focus on the imaging accuracy for those strong applications from aerial imagery acquisition, machine vision and homeland security. We as phase one, we have now, even though we're only six years old, we have gone from the IXA series to the newly launched IXM, especially with the RS shutter technology, which we'll talk about later on. As you can see, with over 25 years of experience, we have more than 100,000 customers going. And as mentioned again, we are the market leader in all digital medium format imaging. We are very much worldwide, uh, as the start of this presentation is in the US and Yuri will take over from our R&D center in Israel with uh, offices all over the country. And because of that, we are 24 seven global customer support and very, very much international. I also put up this slide. Uh, those who have seen this before, probably about two years ago, this was phase one it's itself. This is now phase one industrial. We have grown quite a lot. We have just over 50 distribution and service partners around the world. Um, but for phase one industrial direct, we have three main centers, one in North America, one in Germany, and one in Hong Kong to cover the sales and support for all our customers. And we always like to remind people that we have three R&D centers. So everyone knows our head office is in Denmark in Copenhagen. Uh, we also have our R&D center for industrial in Israel. And also we have, not forgetting our factory in Japan for all our lenses, especially pretty much with our RS lenses for industrial. So what are we going to talk about today? Obviously, it's going to be the accuracy report of our flagship series, which is the IXU 1000, which is the 100 megapixel lens with the Rodestock and the Schneider lenses, but with the new RS technology lenses. So our Reliance Shutter, uh, where we talked about phase one very much being the innovative breakthroughs, this is what we've done for quite a few years and it culminated into the Reliance Shutter with a very different technology concept. It is a direct drive, so it's electromagnetic motor, got very minimum moving parts. And because of this, we can guarantee half a million cycles under the normal warranty and actually getting our exposure down to 1 over 2500, which really makes with our sensors a 0 0.2 second per frame image rate. So it is very, very fast. We also have a premium warranty where you can actually upgrade that 0 0.5 million cycles to unlimited. So every year you have to bring it into service, uh, but it's part of the warranty program. Okay, so now I'm going to move over to Yuri, who's actually going to talk about our accuracy report that was completed in Israel. Yep. Yuri, well, Yuri, as you can see from his experience, uh, it's a very large experience. He's got well over 30 years experience in photogrammetry, aerial survey, mapping, GIS, standardization, mapping and product development. 
He has published just over 100 papers on these different themes uh, and has also had 20 plus national technical instructions, standards and specifications. Uh, he is vice president and member of uh, quite a lot of the societies, as you can see, and also served as a chairman for quite a lot of the standardization commissions. So, Yuri, straight over to you for all this. Okay, thank you, Steve. I'm here. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, we are uh, starting actually uh, our second, I think, another uh, webinar. And this webinar will be dedicated, actually dedicated now for uh, for accuracy uh, of phase one cameras and calibrations and so on. Pure photogrammetric things that actually uh, enables us with phase one cameras to provide a high quality mapping. So in Israel, we have our test field, as you can see here. The test field uh, consists of uh, 53 ground control points, with, uh, which uh, were measured with very high accuracy. On planimetric accuracy, you can see RMS XY is uh, 0 0.8 centimeter, and altimetric accuracy 1.3 centimeter. So you can see how it was measured actually, and. Uh, uh, for uh, ground control points were uh, selected man-made, uh, well-defined uh, features on the ground. You can see it here. And we will go uh, to the next slide. Steve? OK, thank you. OK, the flight, uh, this, uh, as you understand, actually, that uh, every camera should be tested on in some way. It may be laboratory calibration or it, it may be over a uh, test field. This uh, report actually dedicated to the uh, IXURS 1000 camera with focal lens 90 millimeter. And uh, uh, we have a, a large range of range of cameras actually and uh, 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 I believe that uh, all of our cameras will be tested on the test field. So you can see uh, that fly altitude was about 2,500 feet, ground sample distance uh, 4 centimeter, uh, side overlap 49%, forward overlap 80%. It was crisscross flight. We have uh, nine flights uh, south north and two flights uh, uh, west-east. Total number of images was number of, uh, was uh, 202, and the flight was uh, flown with Cessna 172 uh, plane. Please, next. Can we, can we go to the next slide? OK, thank you. So uh, what is the procedure of such type of testing. Actually, we need to to execute some flight with, with the camera over the test field. We need to process all this data uh, to make IRL triangulation. And IRL triangulation currently uh, divided actually by uh, on two main processes. The first one, it is image matching or so-called tie point definition and GCP measurements. Uh, this uh, type of, uh, of the project was done with Agisoft Photoscan Pro software. And the second type, uh, actually, sec second step uh, of the adjustment, it is uh, bundle block adjustment and self-calibration. Uh, and uh, it was done with uh, Bingo software from Germany. Uh, we have to pay attention on uh, on these parameters. Actually, we run this bingo uh, adjustment five times with different additional parameters for camera calibrations and with different co configuration of ground control points and uh, checkpoints. We uh, uh, selected three different 
configurations of ground control points, uh, and we will see it on the next on our next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, type points distribution uh, per images. Uh, uh, average number of type points per image was about uh, 220, and uh, we can see that only uh, small part, small part of uh, images, small part of the images actually uh, images on the peripheral of the block uh, uh, actually received a, a, a low amount of type points. Generally, all images with uh, side overlap of 50% side overlap and 80% and forward overlap uh, got a a normal amount of uh, type points, and uh, we are speaking about 220 uh, type points in average. Next slide, please. Okay, type points, residual distribution. Actually, every type point calculated from uh, many different images, many different images with uh, with these overlaps, we actually uh, can calculate for every point from sometimes 10, 20, 30 images. And every type points has uh, uh, has received actually residuals after adjustment. After adjustment we, we means adjustment of uh, X, Y, Z, and phi omega kappa of the exterior orientation and interior orientation parameters of the images. And here we can see a pure uh, normal distribution of type points residuals. Uh, it actually uh, uh, shows us that uh, we don't have here some systematic errors in the block or some difficulties with, uh, with the adjustment. It is very good uh, quality uh, uh, parameter to understand what is the uh, internal accuracy of the block. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, when we are testing uh, some flight, we actually have uh, two accuracies for the flight. Photogrammetric accuracy of, of the block itself. It means uh, uh, the block, it, is, it means connections inside the block between images, between images. And uh, it is called internal accuracy in photogrammetry, internal accuracy of the block. We, it is before, this step is before the external orientation with ground control points. And it means uh, actually, uh, this step actually only check internal parameters of the camera, internal parameter, interior orientation of the camera. Uh, you can see here that we, uh, around this adjustment with two configurations. The first one was uh, uh, included actually uh, uh, only additional parameters 61 and 62, which correspond to K1 and K2 radial distortion coefficient. And the second set included additional parameters, six, seven additional parameters that uh, correspond to more complicated uh, distortion in the camera. We can see that we have almost no difference between these two adjustments. 1.79 1 for seven additional parameters and 1.44 micrometer for two additional parameters. And we received, uh, uh, I would say, very high uh, internal accuracy of the block, which is measured in sigma naught, and we speak here about 0 0.4 of pixel size. Uh, it corresponds every uh, photogrammetric uh, instruction for uh, accuracy adjust for internal accuracy adjustment uh, for the block of any images. Actually, uh, can we go to next slide? Okay, after uh, the 
this adjustment, we actually execute a self-calibration and uh, define distortion model. From the left, uh, uh, from the left, uh, we can see clearly visible symmetric radial distortion model of the camera with a maximal distortion of 24 micrometer before correcting the image, before applying the uh, par parameters of the self-calibration. And from the left, we uh, see a corrected image with uh, a maximal residual here uh, 0 0.9 micrometer, which is just uh, 0 0.2 size of pixel. So it uh, speaks about uh, uh, very uh, standard, I would say, very standard model of symmetric radial distortion, which uh, features our uh, lenses, features our lenses. If we have uh, this standard symmetric radial distortion, every, uh, every uh, photogrammetric software can uh, correct this distortion and uh, bring this distorted image from the left to undistorted image from the right, from the right. So a uh, distortion model fully corresponds to a standard brown contour symmetric radial distortion model and the maximum residual less than one uh, micrometer. Generally, what we see from our calibration of every camera, of every lens is actually from laboratory calibration, uh, we can get about 1.0.5, uh, 0.6 micrometer for, uh, for the lens in uh, laboratory calibration. Okay, thank you. Steve, can we, can we go for the next slide? Okay, now we, uh, we have finished with uh, internal parameters of the camera, interior orientation parameters of the camera, I would say, and we are going to uh, absolute accuracy analysis. Absolute accuracy analysis actually is made on uh, comparison uh, on the test field. And uh, uh, I previously said that we used uh, three different co configurations of ground control points and checkpoints. The first one, it is five, five, only five ground control points and uh, 80, 48 checkpoints. Uh, what is the difference? Ground control points participated in the adjustment and checkpoints don't participate in the adjustment and uh, just measured and their coordinates just measured uh, in some software. In this case, it was uh, Agisoft software and uh, compared with uh, geodetic coordinates, with geodetic coordinates, which we received with, uh, with uh, geodetic measurements, high, high accuracy geodetic measurements. So we can see here that geodetic accuracy on checkpoints is about 2.9 centimeter, which uh, 0 0.7 pixel on uh, uh, XY planimetric accuracy, and altimetric accuracy is uh, 6.0 centimeter, uh, 1.5 pixel. Let's go to the next slide. And we will see the results for uh, nine ground control points and 44 checkpoints. Here we can see that the planimetric accuracy actually uh, uh, the same, less the same, and uh, ultimate accuracy uh, will be higher. Will be higher because we have more ground control points, so we have uh, less. Uh, residual deformations in the block, so we can get a higher accuracy on uh, checkpoints. And the next slide. In the next slide, we have 15 ground control points and 38 checkpoints. And here, actually, we are reaching uh, the planimetric accuracy the same, and the altimetric accuracy, we are reaching one pixel. Uh, 
one pixel uh, uh, accuracy uh, on Z. Uh, I think it is uh, uh, very good results for this flight. Should be mentioned that this flight was uh, uh, this test flight was done without uh, onboard GPS, without onboard GPS. And uh, I think if we uh, we used onboard GPS, the results on uh, on uh, the results will be better. The results will be better. Uh, okay, can we go to the next slide? Accuracy analysis summary. So it is summary of accuracy analysis. Generally, planimetric accuracy of the block on checkpoints is always at the level of 0.7 pixel, pixel, independently on the number of configurations of uh, GCPs. Uh, Alternatic accuracy. Uh, varies from 6 cm to 4.4 cm, depending on the number of uh, ground control points. And uh, uh, altimetric accuracy may be improved uh, by use of high accuracy GPS data during the flight. Uh, can we go to the next flight? To the next, next slide. Uh, Okay, another interesting thing that uh, we uh, have to think about it when we are flying and when we are doing, uh, when we are preparing for mapping, it is stereo measurements. It is not so important for uh, auto photo production or for, or for TSM, DTM creation or something like this, but uh, there is uh, there is uh, uh, there are many uh, stereo mapping uh, works today, so stereo me measurements is very is very important also. So uh, how we can check it? We used uh, in this case we uh, we used first of all we use uh, Atlas uh, KLT software for stereo measurements. Uh, we have prepared, we have selected 91 stereo pairs for measurements, and we measured 56 ground control points. Uh, very important to understand that uh, the forward overlap and the side overlap also uh, influence our altimetric accuracy, influence uh, and also focal lens. Larger, fo longer focal lens and uh, uh, and smaller forward overlap, our accuracy will be lower. In our situation, with focal lens 90 millimeter and forward overlap of 60%, assuming that accuracy of image measurements equals 0 0.5 pixel, theoretical planimetric accuracy will be about 0 0.5. 0.5 pixel and theoretical altimetric accuracy will be 2.8 pixel. In our case, in our case, we have received from the right side of the table, we can see for X and Y, we have received accuracy of about 1.5, 1.6 pixel. And for Z, we have received accuracy 1.87 pixel. So our uh, practical accuracy uh, even better than our theoretical accuracy for for high measurements. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Okay, our conclusions. What we can uh, say now after this test? Uh, first of all, the phase one. IXURS 1000 is a metric camera, is a metric camera dedicated for photogrammetry and metric. The camera has stable and clearly definable interior orientation parameters with residual distortion under one micrometer. Uh, the camera provides 
high geometric and radiometric quality of images, ensuring the use of the camera in high accuracy mapping project because the uh, quality of the image, not just resolution, but the radiometric quality also influence uh, uh, our uh, accuracy in mapping projects. For the grammatic accuracy, sigma out of the block corresponds to 1.8 micrometer, which is uh, 0 0.4 pixel size in the image plane. It corresponds to every uh, photogrammetric standard for interior accuracy of photogrammetric blocks. Planimetric accuracy of stereoscopic measurements corresponds to the theoretical one and ultimatic accuracy even surpasses the theoretical expectations. Uh, geodetic accuracy of the block on checkpoints without use of GNSS data has reached 0 0.5 pixel in position and 1 pixel in altitude. And as a recommendation, high quality GNSS data will be useful to improve the results. Uh, we are going to, to provide such reports for, for our new cameras, for uh, new, new cameras that we uh, have developed recently. And all these reports will be published on our uh, website also. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I think we uh, uh, have talked about all uh, these important things. And if you have any questions, I will be uh, happy to answer. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Yuri. Incredibly informative. Um, we have a couple of questions that have come in already. Um, okay. Sort of a mixture between uh, talking about direct georeferencing. So I'll answer one just talking about the GNSS. So Yuri mentioned before about this was not connected to a high grade onboard GNSS system. Yes. However, yes, exactly. yeah, if you are connected, so we, we can, a standard with our cameras, connect to any GNSS system that's in the marketplace that can do a simple NEMA string. Um, and what will happen if that is a, just a direct output string, we in our cameras can automatically take that information and store it in our EXIF data. So the image itself will have that GNSS data and even um, IMU data, whatever you want to put in for that, it is completely user configurable. However, one question, again, sort of going on from that, saying, can you please explain if there was not onboard GNSS, how can it was so accurate? So Yuri, can you just sort of explain a little bit more why there was no GNSS data in that and, and how it would be making it more accurate? Yes, sure. Uh, uh, okay, I'm... Uh... Uh, okay, uh, first of all, the accuracy of the block, any block, depends uh, in many cases of, of the number of the size of overlap. Actually, today, almost any software can support, uh, can support uh, block adjustment totally without GNSS. If you remember 20 years ago, 30 years ago, <laughs> I remember, uh, they were not GNSS at all, okay? The first one actually we started to use in, uh, in the beginning of the 90s or something like this. Before this, we actually uh, did bundle block adjustment or strip adjustment or model adjustment without any uh, information about X, Y, Z, phi, omega, kappa of uh, projection central of, Im of every image. So the, the bundle adjustment itself may be done without GNSS at all. And the accuracy of the block will depend on the number and the size of our overlaps between images. Uh, if you pay the you paid attention uh, that we, we spoke about 220 in average tie points per every image. It means that we have very large overlaps very uh, uh, strong bundles for every image. So we can solve this block without GNSS. And the results, what we uh, 
have shown here actually uh, approve it. This is more or less my uh, answer. If you use, for example, the same block, if you apply the same block with, uh, let's say, 30% uh, side overlap and 60% forward overlap, or maybe less, uh, you will not uh, get uh, the same high accuracy. Okay, th thank you, Yuri. Um, one yeah. of the questions. One other question um, was just asking about the difference between the MTF or the radial distortion model and the factory calibration. Um, so Yuri, probably best if it comes from you rather than me as a salesman, yeah, because I know that one costs $2,000 and the other one is free. So if you yes. can just <laughs> explain the difference between the MTF and also the factory calibration. Oh, okay, MTF it, is, uh, MTF it is actually a parameter of uh, radiometric parameter uh, uh, of, uh, of the lens and of the sensor, CMOS or CCD. It means actually uh, how sensitive the sensor, like how sensitive and how, what is the quality of image quality, image quality or differences in, in colors we can catch during the uh, exposure, during the, the exposure time, MTF. Uh, laboratory calibration or factory calibration, uh, maybe uh, laboratory calibration actually deals most of these interior orientation parameters of the camera, like focal lens, uh, X, Y of uh, optical center of the CCD and the camera and the lens itself. Uh, uh, calibration parameters or distortion, radial distortion, and uh, such type of things. If you, uh, uh, when you receive the camera, you receive this camera uh, calibration certificate. And this calibration certificate actually shows you all these calibration parameters of the camera. And it is made in our laboratory here in phase one. It is possible to do also uh, the same result, maybe done also during uh, the flight. And uh, for example, some other, counter, uh, other cameras calibrated during the flight only. Uh, in our case, actually, all every camera calibrated in our laboratory here. I think it, uh, it, it helps or... Yes, no, that's great. Thank, thank you very much, Yuri. So um, just as a clarification with that um, uh, on the cameras, every sort of lens has its own MTF data that's done in our factory. So it's fully calibrated and stored on the lens, which then the camera uses. And the factory calibration, which is the overall certificate, that is a optional um, feature for the camera that you could have um, that would then help with the processing. Okay, on prices, someone's just asked as well, can they provide prices? Obviously, that is a, it's a hard one to answer, but the top of the line, which this camera was used, was the IXU 1000 with uh, an R90. Pretty much these cameras list price of 55,000 euros um, and 72,000 uh, dollars. They're the list price for the cameras and everything else will be um, sort of adjusted to suit. So if you have anything specific, please contact <coughs> your sales guy for a, a direct quote. Um, one other question, um, FMC, yes, very, very good question. Someone's asking, in fact, there's four questions using FMC. Is it essential for aerial photography? Um, FMC, obviously for the forward motion compensator, I have quite often discussions about this because what exactly is an FMC? Um, a traditional based is where it actually moves the camera or it's a mechanical. It can also be electronic. So with some of our CCD sensors, we have a TDI, a sort of a time delay for moving the sensors back and forth. Um, in my opinion, the new RS shutter is a form of FMC because it is incredibly fast. Uh, with the one over 2500, it gets rid of virtually all motion blur. Um, so Yuri, can you give your idea of what an FMC is compared? To, to sort of traditional versus electronic? Yes, uh, uh, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, not unfortunately, I don't know. 
<laughs> actually, CCD, CCD sensors supported, uh, supports actually so-called TDI time delay integration, and uh, it served actually for forward motion compensation in, uh, in digital photogrammetry, in digital uh, cameras. Uh, CMOS sensor doesn't support uh, such type of uh, uh, moving uh, pixels, but CMOS sensors much higher sensitive, much higher sensitive. So you can fly with uh, exposure time, if you fly with CCD, for example, with exposure time, let's say 1.1 1 .1, uh, slash uh, uh, 600 with CMOS you can fly with uh, uh, 1 slash uh, 2000. So when your exposure time is lower, your blurring on the image or motion motion of the pixel is very very uh, is very very lower, not visible, and uh, it is advantage of new technology of CMOS sensor. Uh, actually, uh, because of uh, their higher sensitivity, we actually don't need on normal speeds. I would say on normal speeds of aircrafts and normal altitudes of aircrafts that we fly generally for mapping. If you fly, if you are going to fly on, on the altitude 100 meter or 200 meter with the speed 1000 kilometer per hour, <laughs> I believe you will not find any solution for FMC on this uh, 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 on this altitude. But in gen generally speaking, today we don't have uh, such a problem with FMC with uh, this new uh, CMOS sensor. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Yuri. Yeah, we, we've also done some tests here in the US where we were. Um, uh, really flying incredibly fast. It was over 200 knots. It was 1,000 feet. It was a ridiculous test, um, and we only saw a very small motion blur. I think the the pixel blur was only about two and a half pixels, which was quite remarkable. So I'm quite happy to send some of those images across to anyone who would like it. So just um, send us an email, and we can send you some of those sample images that showed that uh, the new shutter speed really does negate a lot of the need for, for FMC. Um, also, a couple of people asked if this webinar is recorded. Yes, it is. And we will have it on our website to download later uh, if you want to. And the last question, I think, is, and two people asked this, was, Yuri, on the RMS, um, was this calculated over a flat area or a high slope area? So how flat was the um, test field? Uh, uh, so they can just sort of calculate how good the RMS was. Yes, it is not. Uh, yes, it is good question. Yes, it is good question. The, it is more or less flat area. It is more, more or less flat area. The flat area actually uh, uh, influences not RMS itself, but RMS or, or calculation. When you calculate self calibration and you calculate focal lengths, for example, during self calibration, uh, it will be influenced by, by flat area. Yes, it's true. Yep. Uh, but uh, uh, it is not influenced planimetric accuracy, and uh, uh, I think uh, we need to fly the same area with uh, high accuracy GNSS data, for example. In this case, it will be much uh, easier to understand the influence of the, uh, of the relief of the area. But it was flat area, yes. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. I think that has uh, answered every question. We've gone slightly over because of the questions, but um, thank you very much, uh, Yuri, for, for a very insightful presentation. Um, uh, very interesting indeed. If anyone has any other questions they would like to do and send it to us, please send, send an email to myself or Yuri. You'll have all our details. An email will come after this webinar showing where you can download, how you can contact us, etc. Um, and uh, thank you very much for joining and hopefully we'll see you uh, next month for the next webinar which will come out very soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye now. Thank you. Bye-bye.